someone play too much Smash Brothers while on crack. That I would do. But yeah, that, that sounds about right. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual Switch in the Bits, joined by Jordan Zvang. Look at him. Ah, hi. And Pedro Mateus, together with you, yeah. Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Deal with that, YouTube, each and every week. What's up? What's new? Couple of new things to talk about this week. Stay tuned for that. But first, I want to talk about trying something different with the audio. Because you may know, like back here in this rack, I got some uh, analog hardware that we use for live stream. Apex Compeller and the Orban 422A being amongst them, which really haven't found a good digital replacement for. But I'm working on a system that's all in the box. So what that means is these guys are off and we're doing trying to emulate these two devices. And we're doing it right now. We're testing on you. You're the test subject. So what I've done is the cardinal sin of saying the audio might sound different. Now you'll hear something different at this point, even though we just finished like an hour and a half of live streams. You just gotta like down pitch us just a little bit a little for bit. the rest of the for the rest of the show or whatever. It's like, well, you know, I did oh, notice. Like, no, you didn't. Um, <laughs> so there is that. Also, I need to redo um, syncs. So if I can get a clap from everyone, starting with me, one from Jordan, and one from Pedro, and one from Shadrell. Come on, let's see some clap emojis. Slides. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's see some hands. Dude, uh, I was clapping around. Where, you ever get like the head song? I, oh, like maybe. Oh, constantly. All the time. It's like every two weeks, three weeks. I'll just it's some random song, right? Well, and it's not constant, but it'll pop in throughout once or twice throughout the day, usually in the shower, or like when I'm jogging in the morning. This one this week has been, for whatever reason, I looked up the original video for Four Non Blondes, right? Mm. What's going on? And I'm like, oh, that is so 90s. <laughs> so 90s. Um, and that's been stuck in my head this week, all week long. Unfortunately, every time, and it, I, I'm hearing it as the original song, not the, not the He-Man thing, right? And I'm like, right, that, right up until, and he prays. Oh my god! No, it's, it's like, and he prays. Skeletor gets like kicks in every. I'm like, come on! And it's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> been dealing with that, and you might have noticed last week, uh, last Sunday, I've been trying to do editing streams on Sunday. It was just too damn hot. It was too hot. It was 30 degrees at 11 a.m. outside, and uh, uh, uh-uh. so uh. That's going to be touch and go. Uh, editing streams might be a like sometimes what, 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 what weather permitting <laughs> thing. Pretty much, especially in the summertime, it might be like a fall, spring, winter type thing. But in the summer, man, I, I got to be I got to be comfortable when I'm editing, which means I'm going to have like hot tea chilling out and all that, and why I can't have the AC like crunk up in here while streaming, like someone would have to give. So there you. Go. Yo, uh, strange brig over. Yeah, we're done. Um, we finished the last couple levels of Strange Brigade on Thursday, so now I gotta figure Is out there a, a new boss? game to. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it was a big uh, crocodile lady. Hmm. Yeah, I'm at the Devourer of Souls for. That, that, that seems like on theme. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you you had to go fight a giant croc person, uh, shoot a lady a bunch of times, and then the game ends. Uh, so we tried out survival mode for a bit. Um, yeah, the survival mode isn't that great, uh, but we're done with that. So it doesn't I don't know. always uh, suck in a game when you get done with the mode. Like, oh, there's more to play, and you're like, ooh. Yeah, th- th- this is the forever grind mode. Uh, so I guess we got to figure out a new uh, co-op game for Thursdays. Might be Aliens Fire Team Elite, or I might just just give up and stream some d- more DD2 until Baldur's Gate Three comes out. I don't know. Oh, okay. If, if anyone has any suggestions for like multiplayer games where you can get a bunch of people in, definitely shoot me a recommendation on Discord. You can just at me there. What did you pull? Discord. Uh, I pulled my uh, I pulled uh, like my rhomboid. I was oh. doing pull ups, and because uh, I, I recently have been able to like progress that 
and I tried to get one too many pull-ups, and I, I, I pulled myself. <laughs> and so now, now, now I'm in pain. Now my neck hurts. Mm. <sighs> do we just? <laughs> I mean, do you have anything to add, Pedro? You 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 want to use my chain from, a little no. bit? All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> what about the horse? <laughs> I mean, the horse could definitely use some exercise. It's kind of lost the ability to maintain shape as more just like a blob, an entity, a steam. Athletics. That's still a lot of buttons there. Pedro. Yes. Uh, so Valve, as uh, you've probably seen during the week, is getting sued again. Oh, uh, is it the day that ends with Y? Yeah, <laughs> uh, as it turns out, and as uh, Game Rand points out in their article, uh, the Wolfire Games uh, lawsuit about the 30% is still ongoing. We haven't heard much from that. But no, this one is different. This one is from um, a company called Immersion, which you probably, if you uh, read anything about this news, uh, you know that they're a bit of a uh, pet and troll, as it were. And uh, they hold the uh, the patents for rumbles and haptics, and they've already managed to uh, get Microsoft, Apple, and Sony to agree to off-court uh, deals in order to quote-unquote license their quote-unquote technology. Uh, it is, yeah, the Steam Deck having the, uh, the little haptics under the trackpads, they, as they claim, uh, immersion, uh, they apparently valve is in um is infringing oh, yeah <laughs> they're infringing on that patent and uh they're trying to actively block the sale of the steam deck at which point my brain just shut down on the uh, patent troll and started thinking wait a second does this mean that the steam deck is actually popular possibly we'll get to that in just a minute <laughs> man because immersion corporation they have that patent on just they have like 11 of them all focused and centered around just mobile wiggle technology. So if it's mobile and it wiggles, they're like, oh, we own that. And um, Sony and Microsoft pay them royalties. I went digging around it just a little bit because, you know, this injunction is to just stop the sale of the Steam Deck and like, why we're at it, the index, do you remember that VR thing? <laughs> yep, remember? <laughs> the If you roll it back, like all the way back to the 2000s, that suit uh, against Microsoft and Sony, um, Microsoft ended up like buying a 10% stake in their company. No, nah, uh, so cool. Microsoft's <laughs> like, oh, we want a piece of this. A little bit. Sony's like, hell no, we're Sony, we're going to take you to court. And they lost. Sony did. Because you might remember the uh, PlayStation 3 DualShock uh, not having rumble. Hi, your old friend's immersion corporation. Uh, be in bait and drills. On one end, gentlemen, we got to think about it. Valve knew damn well this was coming. Like, there, there's no way with it, the established history of these people going after him. However, on the other hand, I feel like, you know, Pedro said, hey, Steam Deck popular. And I'm like, hey, let's get some time limits on this because this company sat back and waited. And they're like, let's see if this, because the index has been out this whole time. And they're like, hey, I didn't sell enough of those to bother with. Oh, the Steam Deck is popular. Hmm. No, how let's can, go how after can we them. interject ourselves into the situation to profit right. by doing For absolutely their, nothing? I should, you're yeah. not their shareholders. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is a portfolio company. That this is what they do, and people invest in this company. So it's like they they generate nothing. Yeah, it's a bad they're, they're, they're leeches. Yeah, that's what Li they're literal, literal <laughs> leech, blood sucking leeches. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Um, I mean, you know, we 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 can we can hope against hope that. Uh, Val Valve's uh, statement of like, oh, it's it's not haptics, it's not rumble, it's different. We'll we'll hold up in court if they have the if they have the design docs to prove it. I don't even know if Valve is confident that they'll win. They're just I just think they're just gonna see how far they can get it because I don't think they're gonna be too worried about losing this court case. Well, it's it gonna be a lot of a pretty money. Good but, point though, pretty good yeah. point. What if they come at? Are they gonna come after Asus? If it, if it, if the ally is successful, then maybe oh. yeah. <laughs> Oh, Some people have to buy that first, then we'll find out. Imagine that it's like your sign of getting dunked on. You're like, oh, they didn't come after us. <laughs> yeah, but but we're 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 a lead handheld gaming platform too. You should sue us. 
It is Valve, though. Valve's going to take them to court no matter what. So yeah, Val- Valve has the war chest to do it. and even They're if going they lose, to try and fight it anyway. Yeah. 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 Like, fight the good fight. Do your thing. Another thing Valve did this week is allowed you to play some games, at least one particular game, I believe it was, what, Dead Space? Uh, this yeah, week. the remake mm-hmm. of Dead Space. Free yep. for 90 minutes. Uh, free trials. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. You kind of got my attention here. You do, because... Fuck all knows it's impossible to make a demo in 2023. That's just not that big. Very few people do it, but when we see it, we always praise it. We're always happy about it. But I guess, like, in theory, maybe this is going to save anyone from having to make a demo. It would, And it would absolutely guarantee, you know, I brought this up early this week. And, of course, the immediate response, even in uh, our Discord and General Disarrayism, was, I thought Valve already had free-to-play you know games i'm like it's not how you're supposed to use the refund system and this would definitely (laughs) cut back on the refunds plus here's the other part of that definitely would cut back having to deal with the people who start screeching and crying when they get cut off for abusing refunds which will happen that i love reading those on reddit oh man they're so good to read you're like i don't understand why valve like how many games have you refunded well you know no more than like 12 a week But look at it this way, though. Look at it in this way. This, for me, I feel that this puts the mechanism in place for the thing that I want. And Jordan has some concerns about Steam Pass, which is something that doesn't exist. For all I know, Valve has no idea, or it'll never be a thing. But goddamn, let me catch you like $10, $20 a month and like make an opt in for developers where we could just have Steam Pass. I'm sure a lot of developers would uh, welcome the opportunity because there's a lot of people not buying their game, and if they're always getting a cut of a uh, you know YouTube premium type of subscription, probably a good, just a good deal. But yeah, the demos uh, have the advantage of supposedly uh, <laughs> of not having to download the full 100 gigabyte plus game. So if you are downloading the entire game anyway, you might as well, after 90 minutes, just having a little pop-up, hey, why don't you buy the game? So yeah, you don't have to re-download because you downloaded the demo, which was still probably like 80 or 90 gigs. And then you have to download the full game after you pay for it. So it, it'll cut down on that. That's good, well, th- I think. That, that was the thing where like a bunch of the demos that got released were actually like the full-ass games with just the demo key yeah. uh, installed. Yeah. <laughs> and like... That that's that's one thing that like I'm curious how this would work on the back end. Like yeah, obviously they can like just start a timer and like you know one one Steam logs that like hey you passed the 90 minute mark it just like cuts your session off. But like is is are there going to be ways to like circumvent this? Can you like figure out a way to like spoof or reset your timer? I, I'm and I sure wonder if, people will figure that out quickly. Yeah, <laughs> and and I, and I wonder what kind of arms race DRM bullshit is going to become as a result of this. The other thing I was going to worry, I was kind of worried about, but then I realized it's a completely nonsense worry. Is oh, what if they have? What if this has a knock-on effect where the first ninety minutes of a game is heavily QA'd and the rest is ignored? And it's like these guys aren't QAing their games at all. <laughs> period. So. Probably not. Clearly, no. and one of the uh, advantages this would have over a demo is, especially with the past couple of PC ports that we've seen come out in such a shoddy state, to, this would be reflective of the game itself, the one that you would buy because it is the game versus, hey, we got a nice polished up demo. Plus your save can carry forward. That's the thing that doesn't always happen mm-hmm. with demos. It's mm-hmm. like, it's it's the full game. So like once you buy the game, you can just pick This up is you absolutely off. true. And to like the piracy, uh, how long would it take Probably longer than it would take for the person to just get on the Pirate Bay and download the already cracked version. Yeah, that's never going to go away, so... (laughs) (laughs) That wouldn't... We're just going to have always-on games all the time. It's like, oh, you want to play your single-player game? Need an internet connection. Uh, But that's the thing. Those already exist, and they still get cracked. Hi, Blizzard! (laughs) Here's the other thing, though. Here's the other thing, because I saw this... How dare you accuse this of security theater? (laughs) In a different way, in a different argument, I've heard um, developers say they don't like streaming because, you know, my, my gaming experience is like 90 minutes long or 60 minutes long, to which I was like, well, if you can be streaming like six more minutes, dude, maybe you need to rethink this. Um, I, don't, I don't know, because I think there is a place for like short run games. I, th- I think like 
they're like for for like specifically targeted or like experimental stuff i think a game that like lasts 90 minutes is like perfectly acceptable it's just it, it it's just one of these like weird casualties of of the the of like the position of the market that we're in right <laughs> where like you would in that case then like what you want people to pad their games uh, i i think that's like not not the 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 right solution anyways i don't know no i think that's something like that i mean this would totally be an opt in thing right mm. yeah yeah <laughs> Mm. It's much I, like the demos already are, except this removes the whole you have to make a demo available. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about the future of traffic reporting on Steam? Because they keep track of stuff all the time, right? That's why they, uh, you log in once to Steam and you're done. <laughs> oh yes. Well, so you know, we, we we joke we joke about Google just routinely killing shit, and part of this was actually spurred. Oh. Uh, camera by uh you're by, a too dark your yeah. camera doesn't know what to do <laughs> oh man imprisoning me uh what, what was i saying yeah um so it turns out that the the particular version of google analytics that valve is using uh google's killing and they don't want to move to the new version so now they're going to move to their own uh in-house version of analytics uh it's going to be coming uh it's going to be designed with a focus on player privacy uh there's going to be uh uh, imp- uh, improvements to the UTM system uh, for like tracking conversions. See, like, oh, um, w- are where? How are people buying my games? Are they looking at trailers? Are they looking at ads? They're at, they're going to be adding like a referral link uh, section as well, so you can see like, are people coming to my game from YouTube or LinuxGameCast.com or whatever? So you have some better uh, you have some better uh, information that way. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, if you, if you are a developer who is looking for insight into who is buying your game and how they are discovering it, I, this this is good news. Unless you're really plugged into the Google, I don't know, like infrastructure. In which case, you got to update your your tooling. I don't know, man. Like when I saw that it was like Google Analytics, my first thought was like, kind of assuming they were doing something in the house. Uh, were you were <laughs> you surprised about that, Pedro? A little bit. Uh, I certainly didn't expect them. Just like, oh, you're using Google. Then again, yeah. they do mention in the article, it's like, um, we uh, are deliberately not collecting certain types of data, and uh, we intentionally don't collect or store demographic Pedro, information. Pedro, I, I, I gotta ask you an important question then. Hmm? How old are you? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> uh, yeah, we How don't collect store you? demographic information uh, about users such as age, gender, and race. Certainly explains why every other game that I open, it's asking me about my date of birth. Okay, yeah. all right, that explains that then. <laughs> yeah, the analytics part didn't really surprise me because as someone who has to support my company's business analytics team, yeah, all that shit's external. They don't have any like actual mm. engineers on staff. <laughs> well, I, mean- I, I am their I am their engineer, so I assume there's a similar thing in in Valve of like someone they they asked someone a favor one time and they set it up for them and that was it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, whatever. If it results in me not having to answer like the age gate thing inside the <laughs> Steam client, yeah, I've already for, tried for, to for, implement for, a fix for that like three or four times, but it never works. And it's like, <laughs> li- li- like my Steam account age is older than the minimum age for the age check. Right. You should at least be able to like figure that part right. out. And be like, uh, you know, you you are at least this old. <laughs> my Steam account is what. 17 years old can we no more no 19 <laughs> right T- 2004 yeah, I, it's 19 years old so yeah D- can, can i just go <laughs> yeah my, my, my steam account can drink so let's uh <laughs> can, can, we, can we maybe move on from the age gates good news ladies and gentlemen vkd3d we haven't heard from this in a while no and that's because no? they're they, they were working really hard behind the scenes this is a big ass release uh, VKD 3D Proton 2.9. This is what is turning on DirectX 12 for your Linuxes. And oh man, there's a lot of changes here. Uh, so there was a, a DLL uh, structure split. They have this D3D uh, core DLL and D3D uh, 12 DLL. It turns out um, that under Windows proper, D3D 12 DLL literally just points to the other the other actual library and certain game engines specifically just load this library. So uh, they have reproduced this structure before everything was in the D3D12 uh, DLL. Now it's been moved to this D3D core thing. So 
That should make things a little nicer. There's been a lot of uh, CPU and memory utilization improvements, especially on first run. Um, there's improved interoperability with uh, DXVK as well, including some very, very tight support for 11 on 12 if you want to be running some DirectX 11 stuff without having to switch out your library. All of this does, however, mean that Vulkan 1.3 is going to be your minimum uh, supported Vulkan version if you want to be able to use this stuff. So make sure to update your drivers. Mesa 22 and NVIDIA 515, if I'm not mistaken, that's the hard minimum requirement now. My favorite part of this, <laughs> right here. Our micro benchmark for single descriptor copies are now significantly faster than native Direct 3D 12 drivers on both RADV and NVIDIA. <laughs> That's beating so damn Microsoft neat. at their own game. <laughs> That's so damn well, neat. I, I mean, we, we were already beating Apple at their own game with their fucking drivers. So like, <laughs> we're, 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 we're going we're gonna to be talking about this in, in the news we section. Are. But man, open, open source, man, you... You cannot fucking stop it. Get shit done. Uh, the new native swap chain can support Linux native surfaces. You'll never guess why, because it's native. That's also neat. Listing individual games is uh, becoming impractical for them at this point. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Love and, to see uh, it, yeah. I do want to remind everybody, you can always get the latest version in Steam by not just using regular Proton Experimental. No. You got to put the YOLO tag on it. You got to go in there, opt into the beta, and select Nightly's. And have fun. Bleeding edge. Also, some days your games might not work. Any of them. Because <laughs> nightly. <laughs> yeah, ble ble bleeding edge. You might cut yourself. Right. Uh, Pedro, wouldn't you love like a uh, full 1080p, 120 hertz screen for your Steam Deck? Considering the battery life of the Steam Deck, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that was my thought on this, but uh, yeah. good because I'm not going to be able to give it to you, but I will <laughs> offer you not the 800p, 1200p. It's an upgrade from your standard Steam Deck monitor, which a lot of people are going to go. Wait, you can upgrade? I can't wait to break my Steam Deck. This is going to totally be a thing. <laughs> DeckHD.com bonus pixels, and yes, you're already wondering. 7 inches, 95% sRGB coverage, 400 nits, 60 hertz, anti-glare, and 1920 by 1200. Is it OLED? LOL, JK. No, it's not. Uh, how much, That though? was surprising. 99 no. wet, stinky American caches. You can get on the wait list. Um... Yeah, I, th I think I think no lead maybe is contributing to that $99 price tag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, who wants it if it's not OLED? Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Nintendo Switch OLED, users. <laughs> not, not even for the color reproduction, as we've established, I don't care about colors. Uh, the, uh, I want OLED because but of... Pedro, like, Dark Souls will look so intensely brownish. <laughs> Dark Souls. <laughs> yes, it would look extra brown, and Elden Ring would look extra yellow. Uh, it's fine. Uh, but no, I, OLED has the advantage of when it's supposed to be dark, then the, the actual background assuming it has proper per pixel uh dimming it will just not be sending power to it which means a lot of power savings from the display and instead of 1200 how about we make it 720p mm -hmm. like proper 720p and maybe if you want to have high refresh rate do like 75 hertz okay that would actually be a screen that i would want for my steam deck we can do it page 200 pounds <laughs> i'd buy it <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, I'd buy it. <laughs> and I mean, like to, to that point, it is nice to see some like high, higher quality, like aftermarket Steam Deck parts yeah, coming mm -hmm. out for people who really I mean, want to race instead their Instead of their like Steam completely deck. hating on this, like outright, I think this is like step one. Yeah, like this like, is going to yeah, be the yeah, only uh, company. More people doing this, please. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> we'll uh, repl uh, replacement joysticks. The the one I want to see is if they can get a, if they can cram a bigger battery in there. That would be like the the one of the number one mods. I think. People How much wiggle room do I have for cram? Probably not a lot. Uh, uh -huh. Not a lot, no. <laughs> you can probably fit some very thin cells on the other side of the no. motherboard. No, I want to reprint the back <laughs> where it's just got like a replaceable battery where you can just keep swapping I, them out. Well, like shit. May, maybe, maybe a mod like that, I depending mean, on like the, the, the sensor files the type exist. C. You can just have your Type C power bank constantly living on the uh, 
Can no, I these there? are going to be hot spot, man. We're going to have a cap in there so you can pop them out, pop it out, and never lose power. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like the old uh, or like a my, actually this ThinkPad right here has an internal battery and a backup battery. I can just pull it out. Yeah, it'll be like laptop batteries. I'll get Sony to make them so that they'll be proprietary as all hell. Um, no, we should get Samsung to make them so that they explode. Bonus. <laughs> couple of new games this week everyone starting out with uh we like tank games we play tank game um fairly yeah, regular uh, yeah. not every other week uh, shell shock shell shock live that's the one we play usually we, and that we have to go through like, tanks mentally right yeah thanks to meet you all the other names that it's not then we get to shell shock. tanks for the memories yeah yeah but this one is we tanks they're teeny tiny little we tanks not not not, not nintendo we tanks shut up no you, uh, <laughs> communist it's not what my tanks <laughs> Yeah, no, they're not your tanks, they're we tanks. Our tanks. But uh the clearly the developers of uh tank uh video games know what's up because this one has online PvP and online co-op and yes, proper multiplayer. Go figure. And I suppose I should also uh thank uh Leonard from uh Studio Kit, the developer. So to some keys, so we're gonna be throwing chairs at it thank next you, week. So that's very, very nice. Thank you. And so, yeah, it, it, it's tank, tank mayhem. <laughs> yeah. Um, system requirements say that it'll launch on CentOS 7. So if you got a server kicking around, you can <laughs> install it on that. Um, there's also a map editor, which is also really good. Love to I see want somebody to like, call it on that because I find it hard to believe somebody was the hassle setting up uh, CentOS 7. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was probably already set up and they just went, I wonder yep. if this works. I, oh, I, I have a that. server running. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but map, map editor is good. Having the ability to like have user generated content always a great way to make sure that your game has always stuff to play. Yep, stick around if you're watching it live. We'll be uh, trying it out in the after shows. So, <laughs> yeah, let's see what it does. But let's stay on uh, something that's completely free to play, but also has online yeah. multiplayer. <laughs> this is a duck game, but with a different kind of owl. It's chicken fight. It's yeah, you 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 play as a chicken and you fight other chickens with fishing rods and uh other types of improvised weapons uh which also has a level editor. So <laughs> Is that I an guess that, eater? that's Yeah. What? And yeah, it, it is completely free to play. So uh the only thing you'll be wasting is your time and it's it's native, so why not give it a try anyway? I mean, it's completely free to play. I mean, this reminds me of like what is it, DDR2 Race Network with the pallet swap? Mm -hmm. it, it's I, that I, game, I, uh, that game that unfortunately, despite being on FNA, it never got released on Linux. I don't know. I, I look at this and I just think of Super Smash Block, but oh, I think about the 1993 and DLC. Oh boy! <laughs> but you can get all the chickens. <laughs> It's the the game is free, so if you just want to give them money for a skin, I I think that's fair. Oh no, that's where Mega brain brain. Ultra Chicken DLC. Come on, <laughs> come on, you guys. You're Good news: the Linux off. version only requires RAM and storage to play. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Don't even need a CPU. Pretty impressive. <laughs> what, what what do people have to? Oh look, people like it. Oh okay, who doesn't like the free game? Someone played too much Smash Brothers while on crack. That I would. Dude, but yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah. Here's the thing. Put that up at the top. Quote this as a review because, <laughs> yeah. like, like, all right. Yes. <laughs> Hard mode doesn't make things harder. Just remove checkpoints, like, bruh. So apparently, bras are checkpoints. Uh, <laughs> bruh. Bruh. The game is full, full of bugs. bugs. No, go back up. <laughs> there was one there. Not ready the game to be is played. full of bugs and clearly not then ready how to be was he played. able to play it? Uh, not point one hour, so six minutes. All right. <laughs> oh, also, developers, no one wants to get in your fucking Discord. Subscribe to yeah. my OnlyFans, you guys. Damn. That, that's a legitimate complaint. It's sending people to your Discord? For fuck tech you. support? Yeah, you, you, you have a BBS that Valve <laughs> provides for you. You know what? People can it's search a, for It's a public one. Yeah. It's a public yeah. one, though, so all your dirty laundry gets aired. That's why they want you in their Discord, is so that they can be private little tyrants. Oh, man. Not, yeah. accus Dude. not accusing these guys, but like... <laughs> That's okay. that's generally what it is, right? Yeah, and you know what? You might be in the open. There's a better chance of you waking up tomorrow and uh, Valve not being gone versus your Discord just getting noped out of existence and having <laughs> fuck no recourse. Or yeah, that uh, one instance that's running your server just not being up and you can't use your Discord server. And mm. to Ven's point, <laughs> Steam forums show up on a fucking Google search. 
Which Dirt, is like Jordan, don't number you mean one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. whack. <laughs> well, there, there's going to be that. Somebody was already talking. Yeah. Like, damn it. <laughs> Well, I, 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 chickens, ducks, it's, it's all good. Chicken. Coming up next, it, NVIDIA really <laughs> wants us to buy an 8 gigabyte card. Eat more chicken. The news. The, they'll be coming up in a second, as usual. We need to, you know, slow down and get to that point in the video that everyone skips over. Or if you're listening on the podcast, you're probably not going to touch that fast forward button. So you're just going to have to put up with it. Uh, it's yes, it, it's the moment where we tell you how you can uh, share your hard-earned money with us, lazy do you, bums sitting you, around here. Do you do you skip over this? Do you skip over this segment? Send us send us a message on Wait, Patreon man, listen, if you do. What, I, I'm just a Smurf living rent free, man. I got I got some <laughs> extra money laying around. Well, if if you do, you should head over head on over to patreoncom slash Smurfs. No, slash, slash Linux Gamecast, <laughs> uh, and give give us Gargamel's your hard earned cash. You can get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get access to via our Twitch twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Sub to that. Got to thank North Ranger for being a 12 month resub, giving us them Bezos bucks, which you too can do. You can just sub to us for free. Get into our Discord and RSVP for stuff like game streams. Um, I'm. Don't know what I'm doing on Thursday, but Ven knows what he's doing on Tuesdays and Fridays. Tuesdays and Fridays, Trackmania, Filthy Casuals. Come check it out if you're looking for a puzzle experience. We got you covered. Four Wheels of Fury, 14 new curated tracks each and every week. We have a good time doing that. Love to see you there. What do you got planned up next, Jordan? I mean, do you get any ideas? I know you're just going to fill time until Baldur's Gate comes out. Pre- pretty much. I, were, I, I don't know. My floating some ideas around Alien Fire Team Elite. <laughs> Um, I was thinking might be fun to take a crack at portal two again. It's been a few years. Maybe take someone else through that trip. It's pretty interesting <laughs> going with Jordan and smooth sailing until you get to the part where his memory fails him. Yes. And then it's like, Oh fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know the memory. I don't, I don't know the answer to this puzzle. I, I don't know. I, I am. I am open to suggestions. If it has a multiplayer component, I like doing co-op stuff with folks. Uh, maybe, maybe if Tiny Tina's goes, goes on like dirt cheap soon, mm. um, maybe, maybe we'll do some of that. Uh, but yeah, we got, uh, get into our discord, chat with us the other six days of the week. We're pretty active. There's stuff going on all pretty the time. Active. We're actually even, there like communicating. Yeah. Even, even when like we are not live, there are other people <laughs> using like the voice chats for like their own streams <laughs> and stuff. So there's always, there's always stuff going on. If you want to like look. People are always like looking for groups and stuff too. So if you want to like play games with other Linux if users, you're playing Deep yeah, Rock Galactic. Yes, Deep Rock, or um, they're, they're, uh, I think Patrick and Nubbin were also doing a bunch of Borderlands as well. All right, uh, they're they're doing uh, two. Anyways, yeah, uh, we got we got a store as well. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy all the merch: tote bags, hoodies, stickers, t-shirts, girly shirts, uh, more hoodies. Oh, I want to think. Um, earlier this week in Discord, uh, what's his name? He is a uh, blas. Come on, help me. Uh, Blasphemy? Blasphema. Blasphema. <laughs> bought a um, face off shirt. Oh, right. Mm. right. <laughs> and uh, it was like, what is this? He's like, yeah, show him why. He's like, patting me. He's like, oh, that's sweet, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There, there is. There you go. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, if you if you don't want to buy yourself something, you want to buy us something, head on over to LinuxGameCast.com, put your mouse over the support button, go to our wish zones. I have one, Ven has one, Pedro has one, Jill has one. You can buy Pedro a scooter and enable him to accelerate to speeds beyond speed and then rapidly decelerate into like a mailbox or something. Pedro, you should uh, put a one, one wheel miles on an there. hour, I think, is the cap. I <laughs> think I could get enough people together to get you on a one wheel. <laughs> Can, can we just put him reasons. on like a Segway? <laughs> I, I I just have to learn how to ride with him, but yeah. Because <laughs> one wheels go fast. Mm-hmm. And Pedro does not yeah. strike me as the person who's going to wear like protective gear. Yeah, at all. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not. I spent years hey. riding mountain bikes down very, very nasty slopes with no protective gear whatsoever. <laughs> It's gonna be like peeling him off a lorry. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Well, it's, it's it's the Pedro pull and peel. Uh, do we do we have anything else we got to plug? Uh, no, that's other it. Other than thank thanks for your support. Uh, oh yeah, yep. if you're a patron, you get a custom RSS feed. If you like what we're doing here, if you don't get a chance to listen to the live show, we make all of that available for you in podcast format and video format. But you're like, hey man, I got time for that. A week later, go check out our uncut channel on YouTube. 
which does exist, go to our regular YouTube channel, which we do have, scroll down there, and it'll say recommended channels. You'll get that a week later. And uh, yeah, that's for the show. We do that for weekly daily Wednesdays. You just need some Linux-related content, tech-related content, you like listening to those Yahoo's? There it is. Now, let's talk about a different brand of Yahoo's. That's right, NVIDIA. <laughs> 4060 Ti, we talked about this last week. It was rumors. It's not rumors anymore. This is not rumors anymore, because this started out earlier this week. I'm like, okay, 4060 Ti, 8 gig, 399, 4060 Ti, 16 gig, 499, 4060 299 and nvidia is like yeah all right it's real 299 you too in july can get a 4060 but there's something missing here gentlemen if we uh take a look at nvidia's chart this is an 8 gig coming on may 24th for the 4060 ti 399 Mm -hmm. 16 gig 4060 ti 499 4060 no mention of how much memory ram is on it but it's coming in july I, based on the pattern here, where uh, hun, the the cost down is a hundred bucks and it's half the memory, I got to assume it's got to be like four gigs of RAM, maybe three and a half if they're nasty. Mm. Um, I mean, <laughs> like, no. see, like, 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 likely, likely it's going to be the the seventy series on the memory. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, li- likely it's probably going to be eight or six, but uh, but yeah, still, it's it's fu- it's fun to pretend. That for that price though, like five hundred for like a for a forty sixty, even like a even like a sixteen gigabyte, that's a little, that's a little much. Mm-hmm. And he, and even in this even in this uh, post, they're saying like, yeah, you know, the forty sixty is a ten eighty p juggernaut, and there's not really going to be much of a oh, performance look at, look difference at this between video. the eight Nvidia and the made a handy little bar graph chart of games with that support their frame gen. Oh yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lovely. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, and, oh, and that, this is, these are all the games that we can effectively lie about in software with our benchmarks with frame generation. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, here's our little breakdown of the 4060 Ti, 140 watts. So, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I give him credit. He's never like, you, you're doing really good on the power. Um, and that, that's, that, that's pretty much it. It's got DLSS 3. <laughs> the power, yes. The, the AV1 <laughs> encoder, AV1 encoder, but. Here's the thing, man, like, there is a world where I would consider getting uh, a 12 gig 3060 Ti for 399. Get the fuck out of here with an 8 gig. Uh, seriously, that that's laughable. And, you know, these are going to be announced. Uh, they're coming in July, at the end of this month, May. The same day, everyone, the same day, the review embargo is up. For the RX 60 7600. Thank you, Listexia, um, which is going to be an 8 gig card. However, I want AMD just for fuck all reason, like just come out with a 16 or 24 gig version of that card just to be like, <laughs> just, just, duct, just duct tape an extra dim on there just and, for fun. And, and just do, and do, do an Intel bunny hop elbow drop with make it tree fitty. <laughs> It's probably not going to happen, but it would be really nice to see like a 7700 come out for like $350 with 16 gigs of memory. Yeah. I, I <laughs> again, AMD, I, w- I would love to see that 70 or 80 series card of yours that's like the, the thing that I actually want. I don't know if the, if the 7600 like looks good, maybe, but like again, it's eight gigs. I don't, I, that's, out of, that's out of like market for me. And you already have the 1080 Ti, that's what, 10? Uh, yeah, yeah. 11 right, so, right 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 <laughs> what what if this what, guy DLS comes over 3, and plays sonic the hedgehog with you i think i think <laughs> dlss3 is what makes this guy look that way mm. like what the fuck <laughs> looks like john that's lennon the, that's that is, that is not a flattering photograph <laughs> hey uh dlss is available in 300 plus games uh no mention on dlss3 though uh you know what it's got more grunt it's got more compute it's got the av1 encode but like whatever, uh, it, there, there's still too much, and of course, like this, the two ninety nine. Why Nvidia are you being KG on the memory for the two ninety nine? Like other than like, it's going to be eight gigs if we're lucky. Because fuck you, that's why. Yeah, because fuck <laughs> you, that's why. Like, it, it might be six. six. <laughs> that's why they're not <laughs> announcing it. <man. laughs> 
<laughs> well, because, because they're going to bring that out next generation and they're going to use that to bump up the price by another hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's why. <laughs> not not for any good technical reason. <sighs> well, you know, here, talk, talk about good technical reasons. Yeah, no, uh, AMD is actually doing something that's kind of interesting, which is, uh, well, it's not entirely unheard of. They've done this before with their GPU open technologies, except now they're doing it for their motherboard firmware. Uh, they're releasing the AMD OpenSIL, SIL, Open Source Silicon Initialization Library. Kind of a shit um, <laughs> um, acronym, but there we go. The the in theory, this would let you have instead of just having having to use UEFI, you could in theory run core boot or any of the other UEFI re-implementations and still use a, a AMD's what is now called AGISA, but it will be open still in the future, regardless of whichever platform you happen to be on. This is very good. This is very good. This should have been a thing long before now but it's good that amd is actually taking the um the step forward no dates that i could see on the article and they will be may they will be releasing the open cell libraries not just for ryzen desktop ryzen but also for the fourth gen epic socs and uh Dude, I love how like right here at the end they're like, we dare you to use this in production, dumbass. Um <laughs> Yeah. The, 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 this, yeah, it is still a proof of concept and it's not available for wide viewing just yet. But it will be, so it'll be interesting. I mean Yeah, th this is hundred percent a long term move. And it's like a really good step because like you got a bunch of heavy hitters like Google and AWS that are working behind the scenes on this as well. Um and like this go, uh, going going back to what we were saying in the in the last segment, companies are really starting to realize that open source just gets shit done in a way in a way quickly and effectively that private software development really can't, um, and uh, gets coverage in a way that private software really can't. One of the one of the concessions AMD makes in this this uh, press release is like, yeah, look at all these low level uh, bugs that we're finding that we can't patch fast enough mm -hmm. because. It's it's a black box. People are finding it faster than we can plug it. The only way to combat that is to sh op open it up and let people actually find these things in response. Not entirely true. Oh, if you got the war chest of say Intel, you don't open sure. shit. Like this is a good way to achieve those results without having that bankroll. This is not. I mean, I'm sure for like on the corporate side of AMD, I always want to remind people they don't do this because they love you. Mm -hmm. No. Of, of, of course, like, that even, they don't do the uh, GPU open because they like people. No, it's literally the, this is a technology you do because we can't afford to. <laughs> but and 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 to that point, yeah, like um, this 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 is how this is how someone like AMD is going to accelerate to the point of of someone like Intel in terms of their firmware. But I, I, again, we saw that uh, that uh, blog post from that Google engineer, right? Like it's it's a matter of like. Um, the open open source is able to like catch up and eclipse the proprietary tech a lot faster and a lot more and a lot more in a robust fashion than closed source development can. So um, I think I think by the end of this uh, this gambit pays off. AMD is going to be in a very strong position in terms of like stack security and less hardware oh, yeah. and virtualization, all that stuff. Uh, the ultimate at the end of the day, it's a good move and uh, yeah, it's good for everybody. But yeah, open firmware is <laughs> oddly enough, Pedro. This isn't the only firmware. No <laughs> story. <laughs> no, it is not. Uh, this one actually came out just yesterday. The fine, fine folks behind the alpaca. There it is. Yes. <laughs> so shy. Uh, they've released a new version of the firmware, which is version not point eighty nine. And the previous beta, last time we talked about it, uh, they introduced the little wiggle stick to type uh, actual characters and letters. The glyph now, stick. Yes, the glyph stick. And now it's out of beta, so those are uh, ready for prime time. <laughs> Your brain, on the other hand, whether or not it can gel with it, eh, we'll see. But yeah, you can all also set different uh, per profile configs for the glyph wheel and the daisy, uh, the glyph stick and the daisy wheel. You can also, which was one of the things that was missing, uh, the home button on the alpaca is like the modifier button to access all of the fancy firmware things that it can do 
So, but it couldn't actually do just the home input like you'd get on any other controller when you press the home button. But now you can just double tap it. You mean the whole down see what this does button? Yes. Right. <laughs> uh, so Steam now you can just picture mode. double press it and pull a, pull up, say, the uh, on screen keyboard on the Steam Deck or any of the other panels that it'll do. That's one of the examples they give. And uh, if you happen to have in memory configs from newer versions of firmware, and for some reason you downgraded the firmware on the Alpaca, it could cause some issues. Those have been fixed now too, so it's very good. Very good. <laughs> is, that, is that going forward, or is that retroactive, so you can download downgrade the firmware? Uh, th that's the retroactive, uh, because this one actually fixes those configs, so that if you mm -hmm. are going back to a previous version, they just don't load at all. Okay, oh, so I, 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 I go to the website, I got my Alpaca controller, I plug it in, I don't. I save the GitHub page as an HTML file, <laughs> like I'm getting That's ready to install a font. And just remove the uh, the yeah. HTML extension, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I, I. How do you? What's the process of updating the firmware in one of these? I've never asked you that. Uh, you hold down the. <laughs> ironically enough, you hold down the power button and uh, select two. This one right here mm -hmm. under where the select button would be. Just hold down those two and it'll put the Raspberry Pi in flashing mode. So it shows up as a removable drive. You just drop and it you over. Just, yeah, just uh, drop the uh, so it's like updating your Pine seal. Yep. Are they um, <laughs> are they looking at adding like um, uh, what was it? The Lasers. W up D to it, support to it, so you can just like plug it in and update oh. firmware through that. I don't think anyone's mentioned that, but yeah, no, that's a that's a good shout. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> there's nothing sadder than having all these things plugged into my computer. It's like, do I have anything compatible with that? And it's like, nope. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I have like, a couple I, of laptops that uh, just get BIOS updates from FWPD, which is nice. That's very nice. It, it, it's it's really slick these days. It just, it just fucking works now. If you have, if you have like UFI set up, yeah, Samsung. That'd be dope as hell if you would get part of that project, man. Um, yeah, just saying, <laughs> that'd be cool. Ah, uh, let's pour one out. Yes, it's time to watch this. You know, this is more good news, you know, because we're, we're in an era of like mass layoffs and brutal profit, por, uh, corporate profiteering and stuff. So stuff like this is really good to see. Jeremy White, the head of head of and majority shareholder of Code Weavers, the company that makes wine crossover and a bunch of other compatibility tools is stepping down. Uh, and instead of uh, selling all his shares to some rando, and who is going to uh, burn the company into the ground to try and make code weavers more profitable, they are transitioning to an employee owned trust. And what this means is they're creating a trust. They are going to be transferring uh, ownership of shares to the trust until eventually, uh, until until that, yeah, until eventually the trust is the sole shareholder of all the code weaver shares, or at least the majority shareholders. And that trust is ultimately under the control of the employees. And this means that they're not going to be beholden to whatever crazy scheme IBM or whatever is going to try when they want to push x86 on power 64 or what whatever this happens to be. Uh, this isn't and I, I'm again for, for uh, because it's it's open source, right? Like you don't you don't necessarily want to have it be entirely beholden to corporate interests. It's nice to have that injection of cash, but, you know, it's nice to be for the people. So it's not fully employee owned yet. But the process has begun. They're uh, they're moving towards it, and yeah, I think I think this is ultimately a good thing for the wine project and crossover and code weavers as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is something that you're definitely going to be seeing. Uh, you don't see a lot in the states. Uh, more common in Europe, uh, but um, Earl Rich is going to be stepping in as the CEO, leaving a vacant position for director of development, which I was curious about. Um, Jeremy is going to be you know, like, hey man, had a good run. I, you know, I started this company, kind of blew up, and we ended up with like 50 employees, which if you would have asked me, take a guess at the head count at Code Weavers, I would have like, well, what would you say, like 20, 25? Yeah, between 20 well, and 30. Yeah, yeah <laughs> le le definitely less than 50. Yeah. Um, so Jeremy's like, I want to do the retirement thing. It's pretty dope. Uh, maybe climb a mountain. His wife wants him to mend a fence in the backyard. Like, <laughs> legit. Don't start a podcast when you retire, bro. Um, <laughs> or, or do. It could be uh, hold it. But, he, you know, he also says maybe I want to get into like, you know, start. A, he's going to start something else too eventually. That type of mindset. Trust me. Which is good. Which is fun. But uh, yeah, Code Weavers has been around for a long time. 
big, big contributor Almost to the wine years, project. I say. Yeah. Done a lot of work with Proton. Yeah. yeah. One of the big uh, developers behind Proton and what we have today. And even well, outside wh- of wh- Linux. Wine wouldn't, be, wine wouldn't be here without what Code yeah. Weavers did. So, like, even yeah. outside of Linux, if you want the level of Proton that you have with Linux on, say, Mac, crossover. <laughs> which you really should not pirate and i'm being dead serious about that i was reading through their blogs and like they even had to bring that up like don't pirate crossover man we put it on sale yeah like, seriously <laughs> and, and yes i take that same approach like if you're pirating linux software i'm like seriously yeah you just want to go into that cl- playground and just like curb stomp those six-year-olds right like come on <laughs> like <sighs> It's, the, the, those are the people, yes, it, the, their product is paid for because they're the people that are actually making wine and a bunch of other technologies really, really useful and better. So you, 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 you can start, stop the sentence that like, they're the guys who are making wine. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> effectively. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap us up for the new segment. Indeed. Coming up next, the publisher of the next game forgot to send us an extra key, so it's just the Pedro and Jordan special. We're throwing Ooh, chairs. I don't have to the Dungeon yeah. drafters. <laughs> I mean, boo. Welcome back to the Fedorfquisition, where we take a game and run it on the cracked up version of Fedora that I'm running and the cracked up version of Fedora that Gloria Segrol put together, and then we give you a score based on lawn chairs. One chair means that it's crap, four chairs means that it's great. This week, Pedro and I are taking a look at Dungeon Drafters, developed by Manolith Studios on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about $24.99. What is it? Dungeon Drafters is a mysterious dungeon adventure set in a world where magic is cards, and cards is magic. Explore ancient ruins, loot rare cards, and employ clever combos to defeat your foes. And build the legendary spell deck that could save the world. We gotta thank Dangen Dangan Entertainment Dangan. for sending us keys over Curator Connect. They sent us one too few, so uh, like I said, it's just gonna be Pedro and me this week. Uh, so speaking of Pedro, talk ad nauseum. Yeah, the, the, they actually sent us three at the time. Otherwise, I wouldn't have uh, sent you mm. the Hangouts message. But yeah, no, they pulled one of the keys or something funky happened because yeah, Van didn't get a chance to play. Not that he seems terribly bothered with it, but over here, scarred, the, heartbroken, uh, uh, dejected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Ryzen 50, uh, 5800X uh, 3D with the 6700XC. It launches out of the box uh, on the Steam Deck. It launches out of the box. The FURPS limiter... Um, is built into the game itself and everything uh you know kind of works with the usual suspects it can do 60 120 um 144 i didn't see any for 75 which was kind of weird and 240 so those are there uh the controller also works as intended default mapping is a little questionable but you can rebind everything so that's good and i ended up assigning the uh, left trackpad on the steam deck to mouse mode Uh, I'd much rather have the freedom to use the cursor and hover over the cards and just do everything with the cursor rather than having to go one square at a time. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, and the the sound effects. I swear I've heard some of those sound effects before, and I'm not complaining. They just sound very video (laughs) gamey. The graphics, well, if you're looking at the video version, you're looking at them, they're perfectly serviceable. I was worried. When uh, when Dungeon Drafters uh, released, that the reception was very mixed, and when I read the description of the game and I saw a little bit of the gameplay, I said, oh, this is basically a mishmash of a bunch of genres that I enjoy. It's something I describe, something like Slay the Spire meets Into the Breach meets Magic the Gathering. You can have uh, your own deck of cards be as many combinations of weird colors as you can find them and find the cards to make it work. Uh, each of the cards and each of the enemies have their own movement and uh, their attacks affect what you can do and you can see that ahead of time very much like Into the Breach and Slay the Spire because yes it is a roguelike card battler deck builder type of situation the reviews complained a lot about freezes and soft locks I played like five hours of it and I didn't run into any freezes and the soft locks that I encountered were my own fault 
because I didn't check what the enemy was doing and you end up getting rooted in place or just charmed and then you can't get away from it. If anything, my complaints about the dungeon drafters are a bit more esoteric. As a roguelike, the enemy animations, given that it's turn-based, they take for fucking ever. There's, that's probably why they actually made the uh, game speed. Uh, they, they gave it a slider in the options menu, and it goes all the way up to 175%. <laughs> As a deck-building game in which your ability to do damage is very much tied to your cards or you're relying in, on your, um, your character's melee attack, uh, it... The Battle Mage uh, class starts with 20 cards, that's half of the deck, which deals no damage whatsoever. At which point I started to question my choice of class, then I tried a few of the others, they're even worse. So, yeah, but th that's me literally complaining that the game doesn't play exactly to my expectations, which is true of literally every game. But I did like what I've played so far, so three chairs. <laughs> Yeah, so on Fedora 3764-bit with the R9-3900X and the GTX 1080Ti, launches out of the box in a little window, it's fine. The tile set is cutesy and gets the furry-filled fantasy realm across. The enemy designs aren't bad either, everything is distinct, you can tell what everything is, and you're gonna have to learn those enemies because they all have different effects, and you need to know what they do. Uh, I do like the soundtrack, it's pretty funky, it's got a lot of brass, and I like me some of that. The controls are pretty basic, they're deck builder. And the tutorial is your classic wall of text. <sighs> Fun-wise, yeah, like Pedro, I too was a bit confused. If this is a deck builder, where are all my offensive cards? I picked the monk and I wanted to start punching shit. Aha! You see, this game decided to take a page out of the Into the Breach book. The enemies have predictable attack patterns and you know what they're gonna do before they do it. And your cards are there to weasel them into optimal positions so you can whack them with your weapon. And because it, it's not just a deck builder, it's a grid based roguelike. And honestly, I found it to be kind of middling at both, especially like, especially because of like all the, all the tactical maneuvering you need to do with the cards and not having like a reliable set of tactics means that a lot of times you're just kind of wasting time waiting for like car the cards you do need. And this is where a lot of like the soft locks that Pedro mentioned come up in the sense of like, Oh, well, you didn't bring this exact combination of things. Well, too fucking bad. You can either take a bunch of damage and lose, or you can just kind of live in perpetuity. And that's kind of where like the grind also comes in for me, where there's, there's a bit of an issue because you only get cards and packs and money from successful runs. So uh, if, if you get into these situations where your card layouts aren't exactly necessarily meshing with your style, your choices are either to start completely again or just kind of struggle through some very, very long and drawn out combats that really like I, I didn't feel super engaged throughout most of them. It's just like, oh, do I have the cards to do cool stuff? Neat. Otherwise, I'm just waiting. And yeah, that's kind of part of deck building, but I feel there's some game design there that can be done to mitigate that. Um, the other thing that I kind of don't like is the, the, the movement to card playing ratio. The, the, the grids are pretty big. And I kind of wish you had like double the move to the card ratio. I feel that would probably help it a little bit because you could actually get yourself in a decent position. Maybe some of the later cards help you deal with that. But again, you have to grind pretty mercilessly to get there. And like, yeah, the, the first couple of levels of every every map are easy, but they're also not fun. So again, you're grinding through doing not a lot of fun stuff. I will praise the mechanics themselves though, because they do seem pretty well thought out. Um, but like in terms of all the card interactions and, and the effects, I like the whole notion of like, there's environments that you can play with and the enemies are affected by the environments, but the the combination of ingredients, I don't know, it just doesn't really do it for me. I'm gonna give it two chips. Uh, over here on Debian, I don't know, don't care. <laughs> Turn-based card yeah. game, so if you're like me. No, 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 no one cares about your opinion, uh, old man. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. It, it, it can't hurt you, it's not real. <laughs> or is dun, it? Dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, th I think that about does it. Pe Pedro, do you, do you do you have any any feedback for my thing? Do I have any feedback for yours? Do we want to pad this out a little bit, or we want to cut to hate mail? I think we've uh, done a good job explaining it ourselves. Anything you'd like to add, Jordan? <laughs> no, I think I think that's more or less it. All right. Well, I figured I'd give you your chance to talk. It's over now. Coming up next. <laughs> 
We talk about game trailers and why you should absolutely not include all, game all the notes that are just. It's over. At least for this week. Don't worry. Uh, if you are one of those people who are who is just listening, this is probably your cue that you need to get up and uh, load up the next podcast if you didn't set up your playlist who the right fuck so. gets up and sets up a what tell me more about this imaginary world <laughs> yeah yeah on, you know on, on the podcast player you gotta like cycle through your podcast collection and pull out the vinyl you want and stick oh, it on yes, the turntable they're, they're listening <laughs> it, they're, all right vinyl makes no sense i've already checked the runtime's too short but you're listening to your podcast on cassette because of reasons you, you want that <laughs> well, no wait listen listen cassette, we can, uh, yes sure <laughs> L- lgc can be a multiple vinyl podcast you know every episode is an experience with a we can get it on a uh, all right first of all like the big lps are expensive and you'd have to flip it halfway through mm. yeah right <laughs> <laughs> okay so what would be the nice cutout point for an lgc vinyl can, flip? Uh, well, hold, hold, hold up can we get it on a wax cylinder i've already looked into that way too short um <laughs> okay yeah, they, they, it's they don't what, have like digital hack cylinder. Something like that. The best I can do is I could potentially do like a limited release on cassette. Like that's what I like. What would be feasible? Like give out as Patreon rewards. Well, so where where would the split be? What would what would be a side? What would be B side? Oh, well, the well, the record would be multiple because right now I meant I meant, I meant for uh, for tape though. Oh, for tape, we can just do like 60 minutes. So it'd be like the uh, first two segments. Uh, yeah, it would be just like a regular show. It would be uh, Steam News. Then you'd have Jericho Wizard and Hate Mail on the uh, B side. Mm. Right. I wonder okay. if there would be a little bit of overflow <laughs> where you'd have a little bit of news and Jericho Wizard Not if I'm the, uh, B-side. pressing the tapes or wouldn't be. <laughs> I mean, just, just, just in terms of timing, right? Like, I don't know if that's an even split. Oh, no. I mean, we're going to fit as much as you can. Yeah. You, like, you, if you can fit the segments, you don't want to cut yeah, the yeah, segment yeah, if you can help yeah, it. Yeah. Like you got both sides to work with, right? Right. Oh man. Yeah, I, I don't mean like right, right in the middle of a story, but like yeah, the uh... yeah, <laughs> like you, you can get a reasonable like a something that I would press a cassette. Well, you know, a pro for like two, three hundred bucks. My, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> now, now, now we're getting to the logistics of it. We're busting yeah. out Google. Like I have and a this. Google search. <laughs> this is exactly what the uh, the hate mill segments there for. You probably you have some opinions on that little tangent that just happened. So go to LaceGameCast.com when you get a chance. Click the contact button. There's a forum at the bottom. Make sure uh, the topic is LGC Weekly. There's some caveats at the top. Don't don't include URLs effectively. Otherwise, the spam golem's just going to eat your message. Rewinds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we've already looked up laser dust. Never mind. Can't do that. <laughs> laser dicks. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. But yeah, no, uh, the first, uh, first one comes from the Shadow Mancer himself, uh, or herself, we don't know. The, 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 uh, their gameplay self, trailers, I... themselves, yeah. <laughs> gameplay trailers should be mandatory. I've always hated this direction where game trailer is Game of Thrones level cinematic, but then the game itself is some text adventure with black and white colors. Sure, sells more, but tells you nothing about the game. Doesn't. Though... What, what 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 about those ads that have like the sexy ladies for like the fucking four X? No, they're just like, sexy ladies to, or to, like, to like the Pedro lady is bringing up, you know, the because we they're like extra lazy on that. Like they'll have like a good thumbnail and you mouse over the thumbnail to see, you know, while you're scrolling through the doom scroll and it yep. pulls up that white screen with like the text in it. And that's all oh. it is. Like that doesn't sell more. That yeah, it gets me to mouse over. And <laughs> Y'all remember? It. Y'all remember those class of Clash of Clans TV commercials? Did no. any of you see those? Mm-mm. Oh man, they they had like celebrities in them and shit. Like <laughs> they, they they made it look like a movie, and it looks like and Clash of Clans is like some fucking tower defense village builder shit. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to finish and, uh, this is though I don't ever watch the trailers, comma I just look. Let's play series for a few minutes and said it looks interesting or not yeah that's like it's, you, everybody's got their own variation of how they do this like i said i pop over to youtube and find somebody actually playing the damn game so uh yeah yeah you i mean usually it's a google search of like mm-hmm. game space mm-hmm. gameplay footage Where, wherever that happens to lead it could be like a twitch page it could be like youtube or whatever but like yeah um, you you, you want to see what the the game actually like looks like in action with someone playing it, right? That's I, it. I, I, I th- yeah. 
So it's a good move, and, what Valve is doing, suggesting that you just, like, do that. So easy. Mm-hmm. And then you have uh, the, like, the chicken game that we talked about earlier in the show, that the first two trailers are the same. <laughs> They're trying. <laughs> At least they showed some gameplay. Mm. They did. Yeah, no, they're both gameplay trailers, but they're the same trailer. Well, Jordan, Uh, we know that Pedro Mateus is not a fan of 2D. No, this is from Foxy. Specifically. Yeah, and Foxy says, Hello, Pedro. Should I do my awful Australian impression? Probably not. The main reason (laughs) that 2D platformers uh, are is time and money. Doing 3D is not easy and takes time. Low poly fad is passing and artist expression. Artists want to make the pretties and easier and quicker to do in 2D. Bloop! Bloop! Gesundheit. Pedro, what do, you have to, uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah. I know. <laughs> My thing is... Bloop! I played Bloop. platformers for years that was like the one game that i played because it was the game that came with my master system it was alex kid uh, and since and... we're old enough to rent all there fucking was <laughs> yeah there wasn't like <laughs> non-2d games listen, on your listen, mega drive listen we, we, we all grew up like that i was stuck with like super mario and donkey kong on my game boy Every, everyone else was pretty much in the same boat on like a Nintendo or a, or a Sega console. I guess I guess maybe if you had an Atari, there was a little bit more variety, but they were Atari games. So like <laughs> it was all just like stick men wiggling at each other. But I, I absolutely get the, the why the 2D is the cheaper, faster alternative. But yeah, I like the fact that with engines like Unity and Godot and others, Nowadays, they're making the transition to 3D a lot easier and a lot more attainable. Yeah, not everything so, needs to be 3D. Yeah, not everything needs to be 3D, but the, I brought up the example the, at the time, which was uh, Teleglitch. I love like the atmosphere and the premise of just about everything about Teleglitch, except that it's a top-down shooter. Can we just... I just want that, but in like, you know, FPS, just go low poly, go full. Dude, hot I mean, if you had style. to like, play that game with me, it's like, what are you more burnt out on FPS or the top down game? Like, oh, everyone's that game. Yeah, that game or that game, that game. Yeah. How about top down game for me? Just would, give me the FPS. Like, you I know what? How about a nice 2D shooter. side scroller? That's what I want. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, and here's the thing. If you've been gaming on Linux long enough. You're probably sick of first person shooters or you love them. That's like the either, either or, right? Like mm-hmm. you, you, ha- your, your, your choice was like pick your Quake clone or Tux Cart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we got plenty of games and we got, uh, you know, the ever present, uh, omnipresent, I guess I should say these days, the 2.5D games, which are all 3D, but mm-hmm. in a force 2D perspective. Yes. And, and then you got people who get getting. really genuinely upset when you take away their 2D for 3D, case in point, try and three. <laughs> uh, try, try I don't has, think that was more problems. of the three D uh, thing, and uh, it was just the bugs, <laughs> the really, really questionable. Uh, physics. I mean, you, you know, you, <laughs> yes, they, they managed to, to the do smooth, it a little stable better experience for... of their two D offerings. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I mean, they, they, they tried to go back and do worse, sort of a two D yes. thing for Trine Four, <laughs> they did. and uh, they did, they they didn't finish it. No, that was Trine Three. Oh yeah, yeah. Try the, threes the, where the, we fought the plant, like, and we're like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, right. this is a great right. mini boss, and then credits. It, 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 try and forward and end on a cliffhanger. To be right? fair, right. the first try and when they did the re-release with multiplayer, the, that too ended. Wait, this looks like a final boss. Is this the final? Oh, well, yeah. Oh, OG, OG Trine oh, was like a short indie game, though. Mm-hmm. That was that was yes. that was the other thing too. That was like, hey, look at this cool little game we made. And then, oh, well. I, I, yeah, I think our mistake was starting with two, and then going the back thing to is, one. you're running Linux. Proton's a thing. Like, you got more games than you can play. You can pick two D. You can pick three D. You can even potentially even have the immersive virtual reality experience. As long as you're having work. fun, you do you. Don't worry about anybody else, except Pedro, because he's wrong. Blue. That's cool. I'll, I'll enjoy know. my uh, deck building card game roguelikes. First person shooter. <laughs> yeah, make one seriously. 
Don't they? Don't they have that? It was like a what? Rush something, something white. White Rush. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like a first-person card game. Like, fortunately, we're oh, never yeah, gonna dude. know because in that bombshell, <laughs> we need to cue the music. You can always find us right here on Twitch at eight thirty Eastern Standard Moon Time. If you're a patron. Come hop on our Discord an hour beforehand for the pre-pre super shows and a little behind the scenes, making sausage, all that fun stuff. You can always find me social media at Vinstone on Twitter or just add Vin on our federated timeline if you're to that mast.linuxschemecast.com. Stop in our IRC, stop in Twitch chat, stop in our Discord, come say hi, and I'll say hello back. I'm your favorite top-down roguelike hipster pixel isometric 2D grid base podcast host if you're not sick of me you can find more of my crap at burning fool on twitter at frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com and occasionally twitch.tv slash burning fool ziggurat's a good suggestion also ziggurat's a good game is ziggurat 2 out i think so yeah no i didn't throw chairs at it sandy threw chairs at it ah. <laughs> and uh you know, just a little FYI, Sandy is my favorite uh, Linux Gamecast co-host. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you can find me at unaccounted4 on Twitter. That's that's the one uh, social network that I pay any attention to. So, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. let's roll some credits <laughs> and call it a night. Meh in the distance. <laughs> Meh in the lightning. A resounding in the rain. <laughs> Yo, motherfucker, we! It's the next game cast. <laughs> Gotta thank our lovely, lovely advisors scrolling up from the bottom, Omegas, Artharon. We gotta thank our executive producers, Bob Brant, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Drummer, Kohaku Pebble, Tamash Hakim, Dave, and Ishep. And our little Nicky fans, Super Dustout, Empty, Glorious Eggy, and Blasphemy. The Blasphema, thank you for buying that shirt, my man. Sea Monsters, Renault, Ryder, Truggy, Verapanuda, Justin, Dark, Darkwing, Nubbin, System T, Joe, Ogie, and of course, Krylo. And the Death Notes, Nova K, Basil, Chet, B, Romeo, Marson K, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.Watt, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Beck, Gamatron, Dodger, Zetheris Gaming, Rue, Turnover, M Fox Dogs, Fine, Oil of Hope, Jalu, Piper, and the Aromatic Dev. And a virtual tsunami of chairlings, each one without. Like Linux Noob, and Douglas, and Mir, and Kres G. I was going to say something dope as hell, but Pedro's like, fuck you, Vin. Yes. Uh, <laughs> fine, upstanding <laughs> cannibals. Thank you. You're back here on my wall in RGB blinky goodness. Carl, Mike, Earth, Aaron, Linux, Drew, Aldeus, Noctilus, John, Eshep, Gametron, Unoid, DS, and Joe, Hermac, Drev. Thank you for buying the shit off our way and helping out with the studio. But we got to get the fuck out of here. We got to go play um, Wee Tanks. Wee Tanks. Wee. <laughs> Wee Tanks in the after shows. And come check us out live if you get a chance. Twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Until next week. Dynafire. Uh, bloop. <laughs>